Hi everyone, in this video we will see how to set up a master and slave using SSN. Okay, yeah, first to uh, make a establish a connection between master and slave, uh, we need to create a certificate. Uh, to create a uh, JK, you need to create a JK scheme. So to create that, if you go to the JMeter bin folder, bin folder, you will have in a file uh, create create key, create RMA keystone. Okay, so I'm opening current drop here. Open a current from here. So you have in the file create RMA keystone. If you're creating your SSH, your SSL key, I mean your keystone key in Linux, you can use the key to create RMI keystore.sh file. If you're creating in Windows, we need to use the create RMI keystore. So I'm creating a keystore now. I'm entering the uh, first name and last name. RMI as a first name and last name. And organization is using a unit, it's a testing. Uh, company name is task in com incomplete incomplete and the city I'm giving it as uh, ON uh, ON CA yeah it's correct all the details are correct after entering the S it will prompt for a password so enter the password as change it C H A N G I T change it without space change it another time oh. C H A N G I T change it enter password C H A N G I T change it now the certificate has generated successfully uh, the default password is change it the default password is change it so use the change it toward the uh, complications and the uh, certificate uh, issues so once you generate a certificate you should see this message okay so as a warning like if you get a warning uh, like this so gmeter will prompt you to run the command what it need to be done to convert it to latest format so i'm using the same key now same command which is given by gmeter uh, now we got the current password and we're going to change it to so, CHNGI which we use for creating RMI. To RMI. Uh, now we got uh, one entry successfully imported. One entry successfully imported. Zero failures. Okay, now we migrated the RMI JKS to uh, old. Okay, we have a JKS certificate now, JKS uh, file. So it should be created here. Yeah, we created the JKS file, so it's created now, just 16, just is created just now. Now, after creating this, uh, what you need, by default, JMeter will enable the SSL connection. Okay, so you need to create this certificate, then you need to copy this certificate into all slaves bin folder of JMeter. Bin folder of JMeter. So if you are doing uh, different, like five missions, you need to get you need to copy the generated JKS file into all the three machines we are doing the uh, behaving your three machines as slave. Okay, now after doing that, uh, what we need to do, we need to add a uh, config uh, IP details. For Windows, we need to use IP config. So my IP address is 192.168. I'm copying it. I'm copying it. After copying this, you need to open jmeter.properties, 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 search for the host. Yeah, here you need to give your mission details, comma, the other mission, other mission, comma, other mission. So, the, all the mission IPs. Okay, after giving the all mission IPs, I'm using only one mission now. After using all the mission IPs, you need to go to the pin folder of each JMeter slave. J pin folder of each JMeter slave. After going to JMeter uh, or each machine JMeter bin folder, you need to start JMeter.server file. So if it is a Linux, you need to use JMeter.sh. If it is a Windows, you need to use JMeter.server. Okay, now I'm using 
g meter icon for what? Now it's starting. The gmeter, uh, this is starting. So it's local IP 152 started with 152. And the, if it is successful started, you have to see this. The message will be different in the different versions. Uh, you, you will have in a different versions in each uh, I mean, uh, the message type will be different for the gmeter version to version. So I'm using currently 5.4.1 uh, uh, gmeter. So now once you have the gmeter uh, server backfield running fine, running without any issues, I don't see any error here, all info, but no issues here. Then you need to start your, you need to start your uh, gmeter now, just to start an execution. I'm starting a gmeter. Gmeter starting. Mm, yeah, it's loading. Gmeter is loading. Yes. Let it load. Yeah. We have opened. We have opened. We need to open a script. I'm opening a script. Sorry. I'm opening a script here. Yeah. I have opened one script. Uh, aggregate results, nothing is here. Now go to run. Go to run. Uh, remote start. Remote start. So before starting remote, so what we'll do, uh, we'll open our log file here. We'll open our console. So which will have an idea how it's running. Uh, now run we should have log we should it will see a log uh, when the test is started in the remote i'm starting remote one mission if you want to remote start all you can use remote start all this is a gua execution not a non gua so i'm clicking here the selected mission now we should see uh, the, uh, yeah the status step and this is the uh, log where it started gmeter dot hyphen server so starting the starting the thread Starting the thread, all the threads, and uh, closing the test uh, user details. The file that is for what you're using for this uh, test data, test data files, and the test ended on the uh, mission, the mission details. Finally, you will see the, the test has finished if after the finishing test. So, if you see this message starting the test on the host, then your uh, master slave is connected successfully and you are able to. Send your JMS script to your slave and you're starting it on your on your slave mission. Okay, this is uh, uh, from the master and slave to uh, to avoid any connection issues. Just we need to make sure that we need to uh, we should uh, aware that all the firewall is disabled. All the firewall is disabled, so yeah, it is local. No need of uh, so I disabled uh, firewall, but as a local, no need to uh, disable a firewall in your local. So if you're connecting from mission A to mission B in the same LAN or different LAN, so the uh, firewall has to be disabled. If you are using Windows or any any cloud machines, any cloud machines, you need to disable the firewall at your mission level and as well as your service provider, like if you're using GCP. You need to write a firewall rule to pass this traffic to your machine. If you're if you're uh, running a AWS, you need uh, running on AWS. You need to go to AWS security and you need to allow firewall from AWS services to your machine. Uh, okay, so this is how we need to uh, we need to uh, set up master and slave. And the point to be noted is that we need to disable a firewall from the AWS, GCP, or Azure if you're doing from the cloud. Or uh, if you are doing the firewall, uh, if you are doing in the local in the in, in, intranet, then uh, you have to disable your uh, uh, firewall in uh, that machine as well. Uh, if you are doing on cloud, you should disable your firewall on machine as well as the service layer. Okay, yeah. Thanks for the reference.